Got him. Number eight for Jose Fernandez. Fernandez, left field. That's deep. That is gone. You've got to be kidding me. Got it. Jose Fernandez has struck out 14 Mets. There are young talents in sports who seem destined for long-term greatness the very second they take the field, the court, or the mound. One, two, three inning for Jose Fernandez in his major league debut. Jose Fernandez was one of those obvious prodigies, which only makes his tragic death at the age of 24 harder to grasp. From the desperation of trying to escape Santa Clara, Cuba, to his fleeting but mesmerizing success in the Cuban-American hotbed that is Miami. This is the story behind Jose Fernandez. Fernandez was born on July 31st, 1992, and raised in Santa Clara, where the baseball bug bit him early, living on the same street as future MLB'er Aledmus Diaz. It was Diaz's family, and specifically an uncle who Fernandez credited for getting him into baseball, who convinced Fernandez's mother Maritza to bring Jose by the ballpark. But all the natural baseball talent in the world couldn't change the harsh realities facing Fernandez and his family in Cuba. And they had their sights on the same destination so many Cuban families seeking freedom before them did. America. The place just across the water that simultaneously must have felt a million miles away. Fernandez's stepfather Ramon defected first, when Jose was just 13 years old in 2005. Over the next two years, Jose himself tried to defect four times. After each of his first three unsuccessful attempts, the teenager served prison time. During his family's fourth and ultimately successful defection, Fernandez hopped into the thrashing ocean to save a woman who had fallen overboard, only to realize upon reaching the woman that it was Maritza. Son, mother, and sister eventually reached Mexico, and from there headed to Tampa Bay, where the Fernandez family would start a new life. For Jose, much of that life would be dominated by baseball. Ramon had befriended Orlando Canea, himself a Cuban defector who had trained some of Cuba's top pitchers. Ramon partnered his stepson with Kinea, and the rest is baseball history. Fernandez dominated as a pitcher at Braulio Alonso High School, leading the team to state championships as a sophomore and senior. Though he was initially ruled ineligible for his senior year and drew interest from the Reds as an international free agent, Fernandez was ultimately deemed eligible to finish his high school career. During that senior year, he went 13-1 and threw two no-hitters en route to his second state championship in three years, which only bolstered the reputation teams like Cincinnati had already caught on to. It was no surprise then, when the then Florida Marlins made Fernandez the 14th pick of the 2011 MLB draft, a draft that now looks like one of the best in history. With the uh, 14th selection of the 2011 first-year player draft, the Florida Marlins select Jose Fernandez. The $2 million signing bonus Fernandez received was an indication of how his prodigious baseball talent could change his family's life. And the young pitcher's immediate performance within the Marlins system was a clear indicator of how he could also change a franchise. In his only full season of minor league ball in 2012, a 20-year-old Fernandez dominated a ball, going 14-1 with a 1.75 ERA and 158 strikeouts in 134 innings, earning a spot in the 2012 All-Star Futures game along the way. New pitcher for the world team is Jose Fernandez. He can get it up there in a hurry. Josh Beckett type hype. A little bit raw right now. His command's not quite there. You can see there he's put everything he has into every pitch, a max effort type guy. Fernandez clearly wasn't long for the minors. But even optimists couldn't have predicted how soon he'd be carving up major league hitting. Between injuries to the team's rotation and then Marlins owner Jeffrey Loria's desire to please fans following an off-season teardown that trimmed more than $100 million in salary, the Cuban phenom found himself on Miami's opening day 25-man roster, entering the season as the fifth-ranked prospect in all of baseball. What followed was an historic rookie season 
eight strikeouts in five innings of work during his major league debut in April. He has now established a new club record by a rookie. An all-star selection in July, during which he worked a perfect sixth inning. And on the mound is Jose Fernandez, who is all of 20 years old. Here's a 2-2 pitch. That's Ooh. strike three, and Fernandez starts his first inning with a strikeout. Consecutive performances of 13 and 14 strikeouts, respectively, in August. A National League Rookie of the Year award and a third place finish in NL Cy Young voting. Marlins pitcher Jose Fernandez got 26 of the 30 first place votes. Oh, yeah, and this moment. Fernandez, left field, it's deep! his first one. Chris Johnson is coming after Fernandez. That's who was jumping at him then. And now the bench is empty. They're on him for taking a peek. Though the Braves didn't like it, admiring his own home runs was part of the Fernandez package. He was never concerned with the old unwritten rules of baseball. Whether pitching, batting, or rooting on his teammates from the dugout, Fernandez was simply living his dream and having a blast. What stood out about Fernandez to so many baseball fans, aside from his obvious generational talent, was that unbridled joy he played the game with. A magnetic smile often plastered on his face. It was a glimpse of the passion and exuberance a new generation of young baseball stars to come would play with. Ronald Acuna tosses the bat over by the first base coach's box and jubilantly jogs around the bases. He just stung Urania. In the eight years since Fernandez's debut season, only one rookie pitcher has topped six wins above replacement, as Jose did in 2013. The most meaningful moment of that rookie year for Hernandez, however, was a magical family one, when his grandmother Olga joined the family in the US and surprised him at Marlins Park. Fernandez opened the 2014 season by becoming the youngest opening day starter since Dwight Gooden 28 years earlier. But his second and third seasons were plagued by injury. An MRI in May of 2014 revealed a torn UCL in Fernandez's right throwing arm, resulting in every pitcher's worst nightmare, Tommy John surgery. Fernandez would make just 19 starts combined between the 2014 and 2015 seasons. But his return to the mound midway through that 2015 campaign only added to his growing legend. As in his first start in nearly 14 months, the 22-year-old struck out six in six innings and hit a home run. Fernandez, left field, that's deep, that is gone! You gotta be kidding me! Welcome back! In 2016, he made his second All-Star appearance in four seasons, and second appearance on the Cy Young ballot, this time finishing seventh thanks to a 16-8 record, a 2.86 ERA, and 253 strikeouts in 182 and a third innings. 0-2 pitch, 98 miles an hour, and welcome to 2016, Jose Fernandez. In StatHead's 150-year database, Fernandez's 2016 season is the only instance of a pitcher striking out at least 250 batters in less than 200 innings of work. As we all know by now, Fernandez never got the chance to build on the record books he appeared to be rewriting, never got to enjoy the fruits all of his talents should have provided he and his family in the years to come, never met the daughter he and his girlfriend Maria announced she was pregnant with only days before his death. We begin with Jose Fernandez killed along with two friends in a boating accident early this morning in Miami Beach. Fernandez gone in a stunning flash, only 24 years old, a boat ride, a violent crash, the shining symbol for an entire community silenced forever. In the early hours of September 25th, 2016, five days after striking out 12 batters in a three hit eight inning shutout, the boat Fernandez was piloting struck a rock jetty off Miami Beach at nearly 66 miles per hour, killing Jose and two other men on board, Eduardo Rivero and Emilio Jesus Macias. The news rocked the baseball world. After canceling their scheduled home game, Marlins manager Don Mattingly could barely get his words out at a team press conference in Miami.
there was just joy with him when he played. <sighs> to many, it felt as though baseball had lost not a player, but a child. Teammate Giancarlo Stanton said he'd given Fernandez the nickname Nino because he was just a young boy amongst men. A toxicology report found that in addition to cocaine, Hernandez had nearly twice the legal limit of alcohol in his system, which led the families of Rivero and Macias to sue Fernandez's estate. Hernandez's culpability in his own death and the death of two others must be confronted and grappled with when discussing his legacy. It's what makes honoring that legacy such a touchy subject, as evidenced by the fact Loria once said the Marlins would honor Fernandez with a 10 foot tall statue in memory of a youngster who was larger than life. Yet five years and an ownership change later, the only commemoration of Fernandez is a nameless plaque at Marlins Park with his number on it. None of that changes what Fernandez meant to his family, of course, to his teammates and friends, to Cuban Americans, or what he should have meant to the future of baseball. In a scene too tragically poetic to script, on the day after Fernandez's death, teammate D. Gordon wore his late friend's batting helmet to start the game and even took the first pitch of the first game since Fernandez's death on the right side of the batter's box despite being a lefty. Later in the at-bat, Gordon smacked a lead-off home run off Mets pitcher Bartolo Colon. Gordon to right, it's D. It was Gordon's lone home run of the entire season, and Dee's emotion as he rounded the bases and walked back to the dugout personified the pain all who loved Fernandez felt in those moments, and no doubt still feel to this day. There's no way of knowing where Fernandez's career would have taken, whether the Marlins would have eventually built a winner around him after the franchise posted four losing seasons with him, or what kind of prolific Hall of Fame numbers he would have finished with had he kept mowing helpless batters down at the same rate. What we can say for certain is that Fernandez's lasting impact on the game can't be measured by his four MLB seasons, 76 starts, 38 wins, or multiple all-star selections. Watch footage of how Fernandez joyfully interacted with the game and how his teammates beamed around him. See how fans still marvel at his on-field greatness? And that much is obvious. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button.